The Cubs concluded a perfect homestand with an air show on Thursday. Now the hottest team in Chicago commutes to the south side to face the Shark. The Crosstown Cup continues. It's a hot day here in Chicago as we kick off the second weekend of the Crosstown Cup. Here on Comcast Sportsnet, the Red Hot Cubs take on the White Sox from U.S. Cellular Field. Great to have you with us for Cubs baseball here on CSN along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. The White Sox have won three in a row. The Cubs coming off a perfect 7-0 and homestand. Yeah, every day seems like a different theme for the Cubs. One night it's the pitching, and the next day it's outstanding defense. Yesterday it was a little bit of everything, including a lot of home runs. Five times the Cubs went deep yesterday. We look at the numbers for the seven-game a homestand, a perfect 7-0, 259 batting average. They were able to work walks, hitting the ball out of the ballpark. The pitching has continued to be very, very good. Kyle Schwarber has been such a great story. Remember, he came up in June to be the DH in American League Parks. He's caught. He's played left field. Wherever he's played, he's hit. Yeah, and he's proven to be very resilient, too, because starting with the last game of the Giants series through the first two games of the Brewers series, he went through a little bit of a funk. He was 0 for 12, and I thought, man, is this kid going to start to press a little bit? Comes back yesterday, hits two jacks, and check out these numbers. 31 games as a big leaguer, 330 batting average, eight long ones, 25 driven in. Now, the series in July, White Sox took two of three. It was dominated by good pitching. 11 runs were scored combined, so we expect to see good pitching this weekend. And a matchup of righties today, Kyle Hendricks for the Cubs. Jeff Samarja will face his original team for the first time. He's got to be amped up. Oh, you know, Jeff, he's always amped up. He's going to have a little extra juice flowing here today. You look at his numbers with the Cubs. Then traded on to Oakland last year, pitched well for the A's. And he's been pitching pretty good of late up until his last two starts. He really got thumped last two times out, and that ERA has ballooned up to 462 on the Shark. Hendricks looks for his third consecutive win, and when we return, Patrick Mooney will sit down with Cubs rookie shortstop Addison Russell as we get set for the Crosstown Cup coming up. Part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T Uverse, find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. Ford, check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Make sure you follow Patrick Mooney, our Cubs insider, all season long here on CSN. Brought to you by Nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Visit Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. 
Addison Russell, the Cubs shortstop, chatted with our Patrick Mooney a little earlier today, and Patrick asked him about this great run the Cubs are on. We're competing right now, and uh, and uh, that's all. And that's all we all need to try to do uh, is just compete, just come out here every day, just give 110%. Uh, you know, some days you're not going to feel good, but uh, you just have to push through it and do what's best for the team. You were involved in, in that huge Jeff, Jeff Samarja deal uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, when you got traded, did you have a timeline in your head of, you know, being the shortstop here, being, you know, the Cubs being in that playoff position? How, how did you see that unfolding? And has this kind of lived up to your expectations so far? No, uh, no, I didn't see any of this stuff. Uh, I really wasn't even expecting to be up in the league this year. Um, you know, I, it just kind of goes back to my work ethic. You know, I just try to get better. Um, and then uh, the Cubs that gave me this opportunity, you know, just trying to take full advantage of it, you know, as everyone is. Um, uh, it, it's been a hard year this year, you know, but uh, things are looking up. We're trying to compete and uh, we're winning. So uh, so uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this next series, you know, Facing Samarja especially, uh, it, it's going to be a pretty cool experience because uh, Hed is a guy that got traded for, and, uh, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Moving back to shortstop, is there any issues in that, or do you immediately kind of pick that right up again after playing it, you know, basically your whole life until maybe like early April or something like that? Uh, you just have to dust off the cobwebs, I think. Uh, uh, I think uh, that's my natural position. Uh, I think... I believe that I could be even better there. You know, it's got to get better. Uh, I like second base as well. I don't mind playing there at all. Uh, but I think shortstop's my main position. Well, Russell, in the lineup, his double play partner today is Starlin Castro, makes his first career start at second base. Cubs and White Sox, the Crosstown Cup continues next on CSN. Up against, in many cases, a former teammate. Not in the case of Dexter Fowler. He'll be the leadoff man in center. Kyle Schwarber, the DH. Chris Coughlin's in left. Anthony Rizzo at first. Chris Bryant at third. Miguel Montero with the game-ending homer a couple of nights ago. He's going to catch. Chris Denorpi in for Jorge Soler in right. Starlin Castro first of what may be four consecutive starts. Lefties coming up the rest of this series. Addison Russell, the shortstop, and our pregame guest will hit ninth. White Sox defensively, Cabrera, Eaton, Garcia, left, center, right. Saladino, Ramirez, Sanchez, Abreu, third to first. Former Cub does the catching, that's Giovanni Soto, and Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher for the White Sox, also former Cub. You know him well, Jeff Samarja, the starter for the Sox here this afternoon. He's out there for the 24th time. Eight wins, seven losses, a 462 ERA. He gets a 266 against Jeff. Fastball, cutter, slider, splitter. And uh, keep an eye on uh, this very first inning. He has really struggled in the first inning of his starts.
Kerwin Danley will work the plate. The crew chief is Joe West at first. DJ Rayburn is at second. Clint Fagan at third. And as you've noticed, these teams wearing throwback uniforms as uh, they did in the Sunday game at Wrigley Field, honoring the late uh, Ernie Banks, Minnie Minoso, and sadly Billy Pierce uh, passed away since the last time we saw the White Sox. So uh, they're wearing their 1959 uniforms with the number nine honoring Minnie, Billy Pierce. The number 19 patch on their uniforms the rest of the way as well. And a strike from Samarja to Fowler. And if today's Cubs leadoff man gets a hit, Vinny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to Make-A-Wish Illinois. Really like the Cubs' uh, late 50s throwbacks, these roadies they're wearing today. Pretty sharp. Yeah, they're sweet. It's a hot day. 93 degrees. Here's the 1 1. And the slider was up a little bit, but Dexter took it for strike two. So Marja due to be a free agent after the season. One of the reasons he was traded last year, the Cubs. Well, Jason Hamill as well to Oakland. Splitter misses outside. Be a fun matchup when Addison Russell gets in there. A couple of guys who were traded for one another. Samarja so. four and two thirds innings in each of his last two starts. So a little bit like a a caged uh, bull, anxious to get out there after two short ones. Prior to that, he'd been on a nice roll. He had made. 10 consecutive starts of at least seven innings. 2 2 is lined to right, and it gets by as Fowler's going to head towards second. Garcia's got to chase it down. Dexter on his way to third, and he'll stand there. Great start for the Cubs. Garcia just could not knock down the one hop liner. As White Sox team, when you look at the advanced metrics, uh, they don't like the White Sox at all defensively. One of the three third uh, excuse me three worst teams in Major League Baseball in the outfield play in, in particular Garcia and Eaton do not have good numbers. Gar it, ironically Garcia was well positioned pretty shallow there on the pull side for Fowler. I guess shallow enough where he got caught in between on that one wasn't sure what to do and well that got ugly for him in a hurry and. Fowler standing at third base with nobody out. What a great chance for the Cubs to draw first blood, something they have done quite frequently during this recent hot streak. They have given Fowler a triple. So here's Kyle Schwarber. So Marge has had a lot of first inning trouble. And Schwarber fouls out of play down the left field line. No way that's a triple. <laughs> so it's got to be an, a hit and an error. Well, yeah. Bob Rosenberg's right next yeah, door. Come on, Rose. Yep. Send him a memo. Uh, 7.43 first inning ERA for Jeff. 3.51 opponent's batting average in the first inning. Here's the 0-1 swing and the miss. And it's 0-2. So we've got Notre Dame against Indiana University in this matchup. So Marja and Schwarber. And if I didn't note earlier, the White Sox today all wearing number nine in honor of the uh, Mini Minoso Cubs wearing their normal uniform numbers. They all wore 14 in the throwback game in honor of Mr. Cub at Wrigley Field in July. Well, two things to note about Jeff Samarja statistically this year. His strikeout rate is down significantly, as is his ground ball rate, throwing more cut fastballs than he has in the past. And backing away from his two seamer, which can be a good ground ball pitch for him. There is a ground ball, but it's foul. White Sox have their infield back. Triple by Fowler, his sixth of the year. I'm try to climb the ladder here. Whoop. A little, little change of face. How about that? Soto coming out of his crouch. Uh, Yogi Berra mode. Let's see how Rosie scored that one. Oh, that is. 
keep your head down though. A painful error. Two balls, two strikes. Here it comes. Deep enough. Fowler ready to tag. Cabrera's got it. And the Cubs lead 1 0. Kyle Schwarber with his 26th RBI. And two batters in, it's 1 0. That'll bring up Chris Coglin. They've been playing a lot of second base. He's back in left this afternoon. I am really digging these units. That old school look. Yeah. Good sinker from Samarja and Coglin went around. So the Samarja story we have told many times, it's worth repeating. He's from Northwest Indiana, born in Merrillville, went to Valparaiso High School, then the University of Notre Dame, where he was a two sports star, has now pitched for both Chicago big league clubs. And it will be very interesting to see where he ends up next year. And what his contract looks like. Yeah, well, Seems like we've been talking about his mm -hmm. free agency status for the last three years. You're absolutely right. Uh, and you know, he has said over and over again that he, he has confidence in himself and he was just going one start at a time and wanted to see what free agency would bring. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what the market will bear for Jeff. Not having a great year. Obviously, everybody in the game loves the arm. The White Sox are in an interesting position as well. They are five games out of a wild card spot, but they're trailing a lot of clubs. They, they almost had to sweep the Angels, and they did. The Angels have the uh, second spot, two ahead of Tampa Bay, two and a half ahead of Baltimore. Minnesota's three out, Texas three and a half, and then the Tigers and White Sox five back. So it is a very, very tall order. And they'll need some help too. Swing and a miss, strike three. Talking with Robin Ventura before the game, he said, I just told my guys, I'm, I'm not worried about what has happened prior to today. All I care about is today and moving forward. Yeah, if you look at the standings page and you see the Sox just five games back of a, of a wild card spot, you think, well, that's not too daunting. But with all those teams to climb over, um, highly improbable that they're able to climb that mountain. Meanwhile, the Cubs have a four and a half game lead over the Giants, who did win last night. As Rizzo takes a strike, not so sure of the call by Kerwin Danley. The Pirates salvage the finale in St. Louis to maintain their one and a half game lead over the Cubs for the top wild card position in the NL. At times, that little turn that Jeff does at the top of his delivery uh, at the balance point, a little more exaggerated than we've seen in the past. A little timing mechanism to make sure he keeps his weight back. It is smoking hot out there today. Ballpark not full yet. We are told we should be near a sellout all three days. Night game tomorrow will start at one o'clock on Sunday. The turn you yeah. were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that little bit there returns his back to the hitter. He's always had a little bit of hesitation there at the top, but at times it's a little more exaggerated than I remember. I'm with you. He goes at 97 and he'll pound it up there 96, 97 quite frequently. Likes that splitter as a put away pitch against left handed hitters.
a note if you're coming out to the ballpark tomorrow or Sunday and our director Dave Turner can attest and all of our camera people if you want to make the broadcast the best way is to have a Cub fan sit with a White Sox fan. Real good chance yeah. you're going to make the yeah. broadcast yeah. see like those two guys right there. <laughs> Full count three and two. Chris Bryant is on deck. See we can even make it look like you're sitting together and you may not even know each other. Ball four. So Mar just said earlier this year and remember we saw him in spring training and he gave up some home runs with a bunch of punch outs against the Cubs. He, he kind of had the what all or nothing thing right. Feast or famine. Feast or yeah. famine. He, he called this offense and. I would say that's generally true. This team strikes out a lot. They hit five home runs yesterday but. We've seen a patience now that is growing collectively. We had the numbers on the homestand. The on base percentage was really good. They took a lot of walks and really made the other team starting pitcher have to work for every out. Yeah, and a lot of times strikeouts are a byproduct of patience. Line into the left field corner. It'll one hop the wall. We'll see if Rizzo will try to score. Gary Jones is going to stop him as the ball gets back into third, where Saladino has it. That's a double for Bryant. And the inning continues for Miguel Montero. A great swing of the bat here by Bryant. Uh, Rizzo chugging hard, giving Jerry, uh, Gary Jones an opportunity to send him, but Jonesy made the right call, throwing up the stop sign. Two outs, you're going to be aggressive, but you don't want to be reckless. It would have been a reckless send. Montero, the hero, with the big 10th inning homer against the Brewers Wednesday night. Knocked down by Soto. Uh, Geo's got some throwing issues from back of the plate. Uh, we obviously talked about John Lester yesterday, and you're going to notice the throws back to the mound. He's going to make mostly from his knees. You saw him kind of triple clutch. Before making that last throw, um, I heard a story today mm -hmm. that the Diamondbacks, when they have sim games, simulated games, want to know on Montero that they are not having their catchers throw to pitchers who are behind an L screen. Instead, just putting the ball in the bucket and grabbing a new one because they want to avoid the yips. The idea that you might start lobbing the ball back. Trying to be too fine. Hmm. Can't hurt. Interesting. Two and one. Every few years you, you, you see it, and Soto's got it now. The players refer to it as the thing. You know, Mackie Sasser, when he was catching for the Mets, had it. You know, was throw off the wrong foot and just lob it back to the pitcher. And, and normally the catchers that have that issue still come out of their crouch and, and throw the ball well to second base. May not seem like a big deal throwing the ball back to the pitcher, but the other part of it is the pitcher wants a good throw. He doesn't want to be jumping and chasing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's important to, to make a good throw back to the pitcher, even though it doesn't seem like it's a real important. And I wonder if anybody's tried a, a delayed steal on him from first base when he does it. Seems like if you could time it, you'd be able to take advantage of that. Pitch number 30 of the inning, and it's ball three and a full count. A lot of work in the first inning on a really hot day. Take a bite out of Samarja. Been working that inside part of the plate in this sequence, and he gets him on a splitter. 
to end the inning. But a leadoff triple and then a sacrifice fly. And it's the Cubs one and the White Sox coming up. in the American League and runs per game but they lead the majors in OPS since July 23rd so they've got some hot hitters in their lineup including Adam Eaton who will lead off in center Tyler Saladino made his major league debut at Wrigley Field Abreu Cabrera Garcia and LaRoche in the middle Alexei Ramirez having a tough year he's the shortstop Carlos Sanchez the second baseman and the ex-cup Giovanni Soto batting ninth See uh, who's where for the Cubs this afternoon. Coglin back out in left. Fowler center. Denorfia gets a start in right day off for Jorge Soler. Bryant Russell on the left side of the infield. First ever start at second base for Starlin Castro here. He's played out there a couple of times uh, coming into the game for a pinch hitter or as a defensive switch. Uh, Anthony Rizzo's at first. Miguel Montero's behind the plate. And Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher for the Cubs is Kyle Hendricks. It's up five down, 373 earned run average. He pitched a dandy against the White Sox back at Wrigley on uh, July 10th. Seven shutout innings, got a no decision. The game the uh, Cubs ultimately lost, one zip. 25 years old, 6'3, 190 as he faces Adam Eaton and a called strike. Eaton has been Dexter Fowler like here lately his last 17 games 34 reaches. That's a 468 OBP during this hot stretch. Really turned things around here in the second half. Now the Sox have been one of the better offensive clubs in baseball since the All-Star break. That's have the Cubs for that matter. That ball is lined into center. And the sinker that didn't sink, it looked like. So the leadoff man on for both clubs today. And those non sinking sinkers rarely work out. Belt high. I didn't see the number on it. It's either a non sinking sinker or a hanging change. 87. Up. Yeah, it's a non sinking sinker. Here's Saladino. Came up on July 10th and debuted at Wrigley Field. A day later, got his first major league hit. It was a triple off John Lester. Kyle, like so many pitchers, it's all about fastball command. If you can keep that sinker down around the knees and work off of that, typically he's going to have a good outing. Sometimes it takes him a little while to settle in and get the feel for that sinker. Most pitchers vulnerable in the first inning until they get there. He does have plenty of other options. He's got a plus changeup. Got a curveball he likes to flip over there for strike one.
two and one. This has always been known as a good hitters park, especially when it's hot like it is today, 93 degrees. This has not been a great hitters park this year. We know about Wrigley Field, but whatever the wind has been doing here in Chicago, it has seemingly affected play on both sides of town. Inside, three and one. Well, White Sox don't do a lot of running, but Eaton's a guy you have to keep an eye on. 11 steals, he's been caught four times. Pause by Hendricks. And finally, somebody asked for time. I believe it was Saladino. Do we know Tyler's nickname? Is it Caesar? House. Should have got Matt Caesar and him together. Oh, that would have been good. So you take a turn it here. Castro the flip, Russell the turn. Four to six to three. First time they've done that in their new positions together. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I, I thought they might be running with Eaton. He bluffed, but he wasn't going with the pitch. Uh, this White Sox team hits the ball on the ground a lot, and that's Kyle Hendricks' game as well. He gets a lot of ground balls. This one turns into a nifty little four-six-three double play. Base is empty, two outs. And it's Jose Abreu. Russell has very quick feet and very quick hands. That turn there at second base. What did Joe say? There's no chrome involved. Very fluid. And with a lot of guys, you see all the steps involved in a play with him. It's just boom, oh, boom. Go. Yeah. No chrome. Yeah. Is it like no flash? He's not trying to be flashy. He's just being good. Strike called two and two. Abreu has said he's incredibly honored today to wear Minnie Minoso's jersey number. He's a Cuban born big leaguer. In the dirt. Full count. Three and two. And they raised the American flag at the embassy in Havana today. Oh, good timing. A little bit of synergy there. Ball four, he walked it. Switch hitting Melky Cabrera. He got off to a slow start. On May 12th, he was hitting 244. Since then, his last 81 games, about a half a season, 295. That's more Melky Cabrera like. 298 as a left handed batter. Pretty good eye black working, doesn't he? Do you have it linked to his beard, or is that all I put with? I can't tell. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Very stylish. 375 in his last 20 ball games. And the 31 on Tuesday. He's here on a three-year free agent contract signed 
in the offseason. Yeah, and you know, they were very aggressive this winter. They made a big splash uh, at the winter meetings. I think that's part of the reason why they didn't pull the trigger on our Samarja deal, too. You know, when you make that kind of an offseason investment, you have high expectations. Uh, you tend to cling to them. When you get close, you feel like you have a fighting chance to make the postseason. Understandable that they would hang on to their assets. Also, would have been understandable how they said, you know what? This didn't work out. We need to reset. Well, yeah, they had weird timing. Uh, they were 42 and 50 on July 22nd. Then they won seven in a row. They got to within a game of 500 on the 29th. So two days before the deadline, and they decided to sit tight, two and a half back for the second wild card. Back to back walks. That's something you don't see very often. Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, I think Kyle was just he was uh, anticipating swing there from Cabrera through that change up over the plate but down that's a pitch a lot of guys will offer at. Cabrera wise to it. Laid off took his walk. I think that's you know what Kyle will do it until he gets the feel for his sinker and feels real comfortable with it. He'll, he'll go to that game plan a little bit more where he's just trying to stay out of the zone to hope the guys will get themselves out. Once he gets the feel for the sinker, he'll be more aggressive and just go, here you go, take a whack at it. Good movement down around the knees and, and try to uh, induce ground balls. Avisail Garcia, game ending RBI double on Wednesday in the 13th to beat the Angels. Fourth game ending RBI this year. That leads the majors. Ball one outside. And as he bats here in the first mm -hmm. inning. Uh, breaking news out of Boston. John Farrell, Red Sox manager, diagnosed with stage one lymphoma. So he will start chemotherapy soon, and Tori Lavello will uh, manage the Red Sox the rest of the season. So, wow. my thoughts with uh, John Farrell. One and one to count. Now two and one. I see expected to hit for power has not until recently. Overall, the power number is not really good for him. Four long balls in his last eight games. In the left, and that's going to at least tie the game. As Abreu scores, Cabrera is going to be sent. Russell's relay throw is not in time. Go ahead, two run double for Abby Garcia, and it's two to one White Sox, so they make Hendricks pay for those back to back walks. Yeah, it looked like he was in pretty good shape after getting the double play ball from Saladino, but walk, walk, and a two base hit for Garcia. Hendricks continues to, to search for answers out there. Here's Adam LaRoche. He's had a difficult season offensively. Some time out of the White Sox lineup this week. Try to figure out some things with his swing, and he takes a strike. So Samarja needed 31 pitches to navigate through the top of the first. At least 26 for Hendricks here in the bottom of the inning, and here's number 26 for a strike. 0-2. Still filing in here late on a Friday afternoon. One ball and two strikes. Right. 
just missed. Again, a bit of an unfamiliar situation for the Cubs here as of late. They've won seven in a row, and they haven't trailed very often. Russell in the shift will make the play. That'll go six to three. As the White Sox get two on the Garcia double and lead two to one after an inning. Cruz on the lake front or Chicago River contact Anita D Yacht Charters. Anita D Yacht Charters specialize in uh, fully customizable corporate outings, social events, and weddings aboard their two private and exclusive luxury yacht venues. Book today at AnitaD.com. A scorcher today on the south side. And the White Sox lead two to one. 60 pitches combined by these two starters in the first inning. They're both going to have to play catch up here, be more efficient in the next couple of innings to last long on a hot day like today. So I asked uh, Cubs media relations guru Jason Carr about Jeff Samarja making starts for both Chicago teams. Here in this uh, city series, Crosstown Cup, whatever you want to call it, dating back to 1997, when interleague play began. Are there any other pitchers who've made starts for both teams in this all time series? Any guesses? There's one other one guy. One guy. In the news today. This particular starting pitcher. Mm. He just signed a major league contract. Oh, he jacks. Edwin Jackson. Signed with the Braves. And convenient for him because he makes his home in Atlanta. A 2 1 to Chris Norfia in there for Jorge Soler. Chris hit a home run yesterday, his second of the year. First at Wrigley Field. I was jumping yesterday off the uh, Cub bats. Five home runs, including that one by Chris. Runner is picked by Sanchez for the out. Starla Castro. Back in the lineup playing second base, seven innings at second base on the last homestand, but not as a starter. As a bench player, and Cubs will face lefties tomorrow, Sunday, and I believe Tuesday as well against Detroit. So we could see a good stretch of starts 
for Castro coming up. Fouled away. So a lot of changes. So out of the lineup the last few days, back in there playing second base, a position he hadn't played much, and hitting eight. Up the middle, not hit very hard. Ramirez will field and he throws him out. Yeah, well, Stalin spent a, a good chunk of the year hitting in the middle of the batting order, and primarily because Joe Madden just didn't have a, a lot of options. I mean, uh, with Starlin struggling, I think there were times where Joe probably contemplated moving him down, but um, some of the younger kids really hadn't done a whole lot, so you, it was tough to put a young guy, and Starlin, he's a young guy, but he's an experienced guy. So tougher to pay, take a younger player and put him in a, a responsible spot in the batting order. So. Astro, the last time I checked, still led this club in plate appearances with, with men in scoring position. Slider is over on Russell. We heard Addison talking with Patrick Mooney, looking forward to matching up against one of the guys for whom he was traded last year. Soto wants this one down. Nothing in two. Backhanded play. Ramirez off balance. Throw to stretch by Abreu. He's on the bag, and that's the inning. Nicely done by the veteran shortstop, Ramirez. 2 1 White Sox in the second. Ben Hoyer spoke with the media and curious minds, of course, asking the executive vice president and general manager whether any moves might still be made for this Cubs team before the end of the month. And he said nothing is imminent and wanted to point out what a great job Kyle Hendricks has done on the mound today. And he says a lot's been made about the young bats in this Cubs clubhouse. And of course, Jake Arietta and John Lester, the job they've done. But he goes, keep in mind, this kid has really gotten a lot better this year and he's been very consistent. We know what we're going to get out of him each and every day and he's a huge part guys because of what's been going on with the fifth starting spot all season long he said he's a huge reason they are in the position they're in right now Kelly thank you he's trying to settle in after a two walk two run and 29 pitch opening inning yeah, I think sometimes we forget how young Kyle is how inexperienced he is because he pitches like a guy who's been around a long time. 25 years of age, first full year in the big leagues. 
Working quickly and the one one on Alexei Ramirez a swing and a miss on the cut change. Another change up swing and a miss strike three. So uh, this Wednesday Cubs take on the Tigers first pitches at uh, 705 the first 10,000 adults 21 years of age and over. will receive a Cubs wine tumbler presented by Barefoot Wine to purchase tickets visit Cubs.com. Carlos Sanchez switch hitting second baseman. Took over in mid May for. Lincoln Johnson to help improve the White Sox infield defense. Later Saladino. Rounding time at third. It's it's been a weird year for the White Sox to say the least. They've been. Very inconsistent. Mentioned the fact that offensively they've been pretty good here these last few weeks. They hit just 60 homers in the first half, last in the American League. They've hit 35 cents, tied to third in the AL. They aren't very successful on the rare times they do try to run. They have the second worst stolen base percentage. You mentioned defensive issues. One thing I can't figure out is they rank 11th in the American League in ERA. That ball hit hard and fair. Into the right field corner. Sanchez will put on the brakes. He's got a double. A one out two base hit for Sanchez. He's been a lot better from this side of the plate. And he gets the head out in front of this one. It looked like a sinker from Hendricks. Sharply into the right field corner, and then he picks up his third base coach, Joe McEwing, who threw up a stop sign. Yeah, you go to fan graphs, you look at uh, team starting pitching. The White Sox lead all of baseball. And wins above replacement. Yet they rank 11th in the American League in ERA. Their starting pitcher's ERA is somewhere in the middle. Yeah, well, they strike out a lot of guys and they don't walk many. I think that really enhances all those. Yeah, their XFIP isn't even that yeah. great. It's just that some strange kind of numbers. But some are just sale, Quintana. John Danks has been really good lately. And here they are, four games under 500. Swing and a miss. As Hendricks makes quick work of Soto for the second out. Starting to go more and more to that cut change. Just kind of very good feel for it. Dispatch Ramirez with it. Now he gets Soto. Kyle looking for his third consecutive win. Last time out, a winner over the Giants. Five and a third, five hits, three runs. Up starters 10 and 0 in the last 14 ball games with a 2.42 ERA. Two and oh. You look at the White Sox. Eaton's been really good here as of late. And they haven't gotten a ton of production on the second and third. It's short. Alexei Ramirez has had the worst year of his career offensively. Abreu hasn't been quite as good as he was last year. Cabrera got off to that slow start. Adam LaRoche hasn't been very good. So the question is, is it a bunch of guys who 
next year would get back to what they were supposed to do or not. Or is this who they are? Yeah. Or is yeah, this who they are? That's, that's, Ramirez, they've got a, a team option on him for next year. Those are the tough questions that the front office will have to answer. Yeah, and other than Samarja, I don't think they have any uh, significant free agents. Three and one. Ten million dollar option on Ramirez next year with a million dollar buyout. Uh, who's the kid Anderson shortstop prospect would, would he be the next in line I the system very well well they either get younger or they they mix and match or they may be trying to negotiate something else with Ramirez they don't want to pay him that 10 million Gonna grind here for Kyle early on. Trying to get out of the second inning with no damage. See Sanchez bottom of your screen at second. Eaton fouls. Well, the good pitch, good change up. Had him out on the front foot, but he keeps the hands through the zone. And we'll get a piece. Gives you a tough at bat. 344 on base percentage. Up over 360 last year. Look out. Foul ball and the bat ends up three or four rows behind the Cubs dugout and I think everybody is okay. Third walk, the first two innings. That one appeared to be off the inside corner. There was a, a couple pitches uh, last inning where he was shooting for that inside corner with the, the comeback two seam fastball. Looked like he caught the corner, didn't get the call. Trying to work that pitch from off the plate back to the inside corner and just didn't quite get the movement he was hoping for. Fastball misses low and outside on Saladino. Three walks in a game is a big number for Kyle Hendricks, let alone three in less than two innings. Yeah, so the Cubs, it's interesting. They're, they're on quite a stretch here. Number one, they're starting pitchers over the last 14 games, 10 and 0 with a 242. But 14 straight games as well for the entire staff of three or fewer walks. So they're right at that limit. The last time they had a, a run this long with no more than three walks given up in a game, 1975, when they had a 16 gamer. And as you said, the, one of the last candidates you would think would press their luck on that would be Kyle Hendricks in two innings. Yeah, and it's you know because Kyle, you know, he, he can't overpower the strike zone, so he has to shoot for corners. So he has to be more precise than most starting pitchers, and uh, usually he is. I think he's adhering to that philosophy. If I'm going to make a mistake, it's not going to be over the heart of the plate. If I miss the corner by being a little too far in, or a little too far out, so be it. But I don't want to. Leave a pitch over the fat part of the plate. 
Driving attempt by Bryant. He can't get it. Russell does. It'll be an infield hit. But by keeping that ball on the infield, he keeps Sanchez from trying to score. So the bases are loaded. Well, that could be a significant play, even though it's a hit, just not allowing it to reach the grass. It's beyond the reach of Bryant, um, but Russell there to cover it up. And we know he has tremendous range going in that direction because we've seen him run on the other side of the infield, make play after play out behind second base. Abreu walked in the first and he swings and misses. Now these two teams get together. We always talk about Rizzo and Abreu, two very talented hitters. Abreu, the rookie of the year last year. Rizzo, an all star each of the last two years. Abreu was an all star last year, not this. Big difference. Uh, uh, Rizzo, much more patient. A lot more walks than Abreu. And a look at our ATT UVerse multi view. Bases loaded situation, two outs. Try. One and two. That's the pitch he wants to get him out with that cut change up that we've seen be effective for him already. I thought they might take a shot inside first and then go back out there. The problem is Abreu is really good. If you don't get that ball way in on him, he's really good at shooting that ball the other way. Two seamers moving in on him. I've seen him time and again hammer that ball out to right center. Knocked down by Montero. It's like Clayton Richard, former White Sox. Is up in the Cubs bullpen here in the second inning. As much as you hate to walk in a run, I mean, I, I'm, st I'm I'm very careful with the Brave throughout this at bat, regardless of count. Swing and a miss. To finally get out of the inning. It's been a taffy pull for Kyle here these first two innings. Trailing two to one. High speed action. This ball drilled into right, and Abisayo Garcia could not knock it down. And Dexter Fowler ends up with a game uh, leading triple. Game uh, led off the game, I should say, with a three bagger, and then came around to score on the sack fly by Schwarber. White Sox answered with two in the bottom of the first. We're now in the third. 
You got to eat the ice cream fast today. Yeah. The melt factor is awfully high. Marjo likes to attack with that first pitch fastball. It throws a strike one a high percentage of the time. One and one. The wind and the pitch. Got away from Samarja. Two and one. Everything else around baseball is uh, later this evening. When asked about making the start against the Cubs, Jeff. Just another game. Just another game. Uh huh. Right. We both know that that is not the case. Bowers two for two. And he will stop. He's got a double halfway to the cycle. Very good swings of the bat. Solid contact to the pull side. Been a ton of hitting lately, but he's been getting on base a lot with all the walks. Overall, the numbers getting better and better here for Fowler. And another chance for Schwarbs. So this is just another start, huh? Or Jeff Samardi. Yeah. yeah, there's no way you, you you know you can't spend that much time with an organization and then face them for the first time and not have a little extra either adrenaline or butterfly. I mean that all goes away when you go down to the bullpen and you prepare and you get ready to pitch. I mean he doesn't need extra motivation. Nobody does at this level. Well, behind the runner. So yeah there you go at Soto the issue of him throwing back to the mound not affecting the throw to the base. He fired a strike. To Ramirez. As caught stealing percentage of Soto's is, is about league average. See where Schwarber is standing. A lot of guys will stand with that back foot. On the chalk line the back of the box. Schwarber doesn't, even against a guy who's throwing 97. It tells you how quick his bat is. Three and one. But Jeff always, as a cup, prided himself on pitching in big games. And one of his Best starts as a cup came here in this ballpark a couple of seasons ago. Ball four, two on, nobody out. So Marge able to avoid a big number in the first inning. He highlighted his first inning struggles this year, so he got away with just a singleton there, but. Back in the soup a little bit here. First and second, nobody out. Three, four, five coming up for the Cubs. White Sox going over their uh, infield defense, contemplating a possible bunt here from Coglin. I would be really surprised to see that happen. Of a tortoise in a hair matchup when you think about it. Samarja versus Hendricks and their style of pitching. Samarja kind of a max effort guy. Go, go, go. 
Going at 97 miles an hour, and Kyle's like, with a cut, with a sink, with a change piece. Aggressive swing there by Coglin. Ahead in the count. Now it's two and one. Cubs are 11 and 0 when he has hit third in the lineup. We haven't seen Joe mess with this batting order very much here lately. As the Cubs have won 13 of their last 14. Ribbon out in the deep right center. Eaton going back after and it's gone. And that is a big three run homer for Coughlin. 4 2 Cubs in the third. Five of them yesterday. This is a beautiful swing of the bat by Chris Coggan. Man, he's hit so many balls at Wrigley this year that would normally fly out of there. Rewarded with a, from a good swing here today. Double Ooh. walk home run. Rizzo. Lines to Garcia. The ball struck well. It's the first out. You're talking about the lineup and how Joe has you know, stayed with a pretty steady approach here through this through this winning streak. And I think that's always a challenge for a manager when you're going good. You don't want to make changes, but at the same time, you have to continue to, to you know, realize that guys need a break. Other guys need some playing time. Become a slave to the streak, you know. You got to continue to manage and yep. do what you think is right. Now, if you want to wear the same underwear every day, that's fine. You do that. It's perfectly logical. Have the same thing for breakfast. What your underwear? What? No, the, the, oh, the same, same, oh, same okay. underwear, same breakfast, same, you know, same That's path a separate to the thought. Okay, yeah. I got you. <laughs> or you, you could worry me there a little you bit. You could eat breakfast in your underwear. Okay. Every same every day. Except for when you're on the road. Andy Vance likes that. The difference between home and road is they frown on it when you go downstairs on the road and have breakfast in your underwear. One and two. To Bryant, whose first inning double extended his hitting streak to 11 games. But three double digit hitting streaks already. Live ball center field. Eaton grabs it. Last time out, Samarja allowed seven runs, all earned in four and two thirds. That was at Kansas City. His previous start was here against the Yankees, allowed nine runs in four and two thirds. Check swing roller up along third. Samarja barehands it, and he will get Montero. And that ends the inning. Chris Coglin with a three run blast. Career best 12th homer of the season. And the Cubs now lead four to two.
Chiefs and we're celebrating the 90s Budweiser Bleacher fans 21 and older will receive a reissue neon Cubs hat. And one of two uh, popular colors they were very popular in the 90s a fun 90s themed pop culture will be featured throughout the game for tickets. Visit Cubs.com. Probably be a lot of questions about uh, Friends and Seinfeld, the right? 90s TV shows. Right Staples, yeah. Strike called on Cabrera. So now a two run lead for Hendricks. So his goal here is to. Got to settle down a little bit as he nears 60 pitches. Well, think about the turnaround. Uh, he's faced with that bases loaded situation with Abreu up last inning, makes it Danny of a pitch with the changeup to punch him out, wiggles out of that jam, and then his boys drop a three spot on the board for him. Change up one and two. Wait, Richard is still up, so Joe has not yet seen enough uh, from Hendricks to kind of figure out if it's just not his day or if he's going to get it together. That felt like a Kyle Hendricks sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know for the most part, I, I, you know, he struggled to get a sinker going in there in the first inning. So you know, a couple of walks there that hurt him. But I think you know, for the most part, he's he's been pretty good here today. Sanchez ambushed him last inning with that one-out double. And as you mentioned at the outset, a lot of these White Sox hitters are in a pretty good groove right now, seeing the ball up. But this will this is uh, kind of an interesting. Take on it now that he has the lead and the White Sox hitters, do they get a little more hitterish instead of being patient? And that really plays to his strength. Garcia with a two run double in the first. A lot of hitters, especially when they're facing a guy they haven't seen a whole lot of, you know, they'll be patient that first at bat. They try to get a measure of his velocity, what the ball looks like coming out of his hand. Then later in the game, they feel like they got a pretty good read and they'll start swinging. He'll take advantage of that aggressiveness. Rizzo looks it in as Hendricks covers and beats Garcia to the bag. Goes three to one. Now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Northside Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself later in the game. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Strike on LaRoche. Twenty two career homers against the Cubs, the second most he's hit against any opponent. Twenty nine against the Mets. The only guy over on that side in the shift. That's the Kyle Hendricks Joe Mad wanted to see today. A one, two, three, shutdown third.
For the Colts, stay with CSN for all of the latest news from Bourbon A. Don't miss our daily reports from training camp every night on Sports Talk Live and Sportsnet Central and follow along 24-7 at CSNChicago.com. Chicago Bears Training Camp 2015 presented by Apt Electronics Appliances and more. Cubs lead this one four to two. Jeff Samarja has had a tough month of August. Did not get out of the fifth in either of his last two starts. Gave up nine against the Yankees here on August 2nd and four and two thirds. Seven allowed at Kansas City in his last start in four and two thirds. The Norfia fouls. Two strikes on Chris. And Jeff has the reputation and well deserved of being a, a great competitor, a real bulldog out there. Uh, in terms of your ERA, sometimes that can work against you because managers tend to stay with that guy a little bit longer. <laughs> you know, you know, the next thing you know, it's uh, instead of uh, giving up four and turning it over to the bullpen, there's seven runs charged to your record. But it's just the nature of it. You don't want to be the other guy. You don't want to be the guy who gets accused of bailing just to protect his numbers. The old five and fly. Good take. Two and two. Sanchez and Abreu will apply the tag as he came off first base. So the North be retired, and here's Castro for the second time. Time Cup teammates. Jeff Samarja and Starlin Castro. Leaves it a slider. 0 and 2. Big series in Toronto this weekend. Yankees and Blue Jays. Battle for the American League East lead. Yankees are a half game out. They ended a five game losing streak with an 8 6 win at Cleveland. On Thursday, Toronto has won 11 in a row. David Price for Toronto tonight. Uh, Ivan Nova will pitch for the Yankees. So the Cubs are the hottest team in the United States. Yeah, we could say that. Toronto's the hottest team in Major League Baseball. First team with two 11 game winning streaks in the same season since the 1954 Indians. That should be a sold out series at Rogers Center. That one rolled into right for a base hit. Looked like Castro went off the plate. That magic wand did the trick. It's sliding away, but didn't have very good downward tilt, and Castro stays on it. He just rolls it through that hole on the right side. A couple good swings uh, as a pinch hitter in recent days. Russell with a man on and one out. White Sox at double play depth. Inside ball one. Looks like the Cubs will have to deal with Miguel Cabrera next week when the Tigers come to Wrigley Field for two games. He will be activated off the uh, disabled list tonight in Houston. 
And a nice return to uh, Houston for Brad Osmus. I think they're uh, honoring the 05 National League champions with Osmus back in town. Two and zero. Oh. Fredo Simon and Dallas Keuchel matching up tonight in Houston. Astros a game and a half ahead of the Angels in the American League West. Easy play Garcia. Two outs and here comes Fowler who has triple doubled and scored twice. Big day yesterday. Homer doubled two walks. He scored five runs here these last two days. Wouldn't it be funny if he, maybe not funny, but ironic, if he tripled and homered and came up a single short of the cycle? It could happen. Given the nature of his first hit. And it would be more impressive than a cycle. Again, Garcia, really shallow in right field. The one that was overturned. They originally said it was in play, but it clearly hit the green wall behind the basket. Castro takes off. The pitch is high. The throw is right on the money. So Soto gets Castro. And that's it for the Cubs in the fourth. They lead the White Sox four to two. Cable in Gridley, Illinois. Uh, Sunday, the 23rd, Cubs Braves, first pitch 120. First 5,000 kids receive a Cubs toy airplane presented by American Airlines. After the ball game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 and younger, with wristbands will get to run the bases, weather permitting. For more information, visit Cubs.com. A lot of tweeters think that uh, Castro was safe. He was out. Ramirez clearly tagged him on the bottom of his foot to end the inning. Here is Ramirez, and he went after a high curve or a change. Now watch the glove. Catches right there. Caught the heel. Yeah, he got him on the rear end. That was the second tag. Sinker inside, one and one. I'm not a big proponent of the head first slide, but it might have been a little quicker when he head first in that situation. 
Russell throws out Ramirez. Four consecutive ground ball outs for Hendricks. Here's to have his mojo back. And nothing. I wish my brother in law a happy 40th birthday, Dan Sino, in the ballpark today. Happy birthday, Dan. Shares a birthday with Juan Pierre. How old is uh, JP? 38. With 2,200 hits in his big league career, over 600 stolen bases. Played for both of these clubs. Yeah, one of my favorites. Sanchez from the eight hole is two for two. Well, Juan Pierre, one of many in Major League history to play for these two teams 178 and these are guys on the current roster essentially in the ballpark today Bonifacio just came off the DL Zach Putnam is in the White Sox bullpen Samarja Soto Clayton Richard guys who are no longer active players Mark Parent Dave Martinez and up here on our broadcast level Steve Stone and Darren Jackson Ron Sano Sammy Sosa long long list and uh, Ron Coomer, who played for the Cubs, started in the White Sox organization, played in their minor leagues, did not play in the big leagues for the Sox, and he's a South Side guy. Good jump by Sanchez. Here's the throw by Montero, and it gets past Castro, but Sanchez could not locate it. That's a stolen base. That was Soto with the play, double play in order. Uh, White Sox start Sanchez. is interesting. He had a huge jump, actually, kind of double clutched. Watch him go, hesitate, and then finally commit. First steal of the year, second of his career. Pulled in the left. Sanchez is going to score. Giovanni Soto with an RBI single. 4 3 now. Former National League Rookie of the Year with the Cubs and an All Star in 08. And it's now a one run ball game. So Joe Madden has seen a, or has had. An inclination to make an early move to the bullpen when protecting leads here lately. Uh, Jason Hamill twice been victimized by that. If the victimized is the right term. Jason hasn't been happy with it. It's, it's worked out for the Cubs. They won both of those games. Clayton Richards been up a couple of times already. We'll see if Joe gets that bullpen started again here. Eaten on base two more times today. A single and a walk. And he bunts and it's foul. If he bunts fair, he's probably got a hit. On base twice already today, single and a walk. He's hit nine home runs this year, so he's. At that component as well. Not just a pesky little leadoff guy. He's got some pop in that bat. Drives it the other way. Coglin goes back on it. It's gone. 
A home run to the opposite way for Adam Eaton. And the White Sox lead for the second time. I didn't know he had that kind of pop in his back. I didn't either. Punch that ball out of here the other way. It's kind of ironic in that for the first couple of innings Hendricks appeared to be in a lot of trouble. He worked out of a big jam in the second and he appeared to have settled in. But boom 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 and the Sox have dropped the three spot on him. A couple of singles in this off field home run by Eaton. Yeah wow I'm with you Kyle that's surprising. A three run fourth. Well, like Wrigley yesterday, this ballpark playing a little more hitter friendly than it has most of the year. Richard was up yet again. Richard, he is left-handed like Zach Duke. <laughs> Bow back of the plate. What'd you say? Uh, the three-game series at Wrigley between these 11, two clubs, eleven total runs, runs combined. <laughs> the Cubs uh, with four today match their output in that three-game set. One home run in that series. Jake Arrieta off Jose Quintana. Castro on the dive can't get it. Saladino on for the second time. That's going to be it, I believe, for Hendricks. Yep. Here comes Joe. A short start for Kyle Hendricks and in early Weber's sauces and seasonings call to the pen. Why grill with anything else? Call to the pen. Here is left-hander Clayton Richard. He beat out Jeff Samarja for Mr. Football 2002. Later that the same school year was named Mr. Baseball in the state of Indiana. Man. Unbelievable. Nobody does that. Clayton uh, 
effective as a starting pitcher for the Cubs. Three. Trial, three starting assignments, uh, working out of the bullpen. Was really good a couple of days ago, and in even third, got four outs on eight pitches. That was against the Brewers. Back where it all started for him, he was a uh, eighth round draft pick of the White Sox back in 2005. Looking to get that two ball. Ball one on Abreu. Saladino, the runner at first. Cubs have won their last seven in a row. They have not lost in nine days. Is that Pittsburgh on the fifth of this month? Before that, the previous loss was July 28th. They won 13 of 14, and if they're going to continue this great stretch today, they're going to have to come from behind for the second time. There's going to be more points scored in this one. For sure. Banging away at the bottom of the strike zone. Toward the hole, a little sliding stop by Russell, the stretch by Castro, out at second. Boy, pretty slick by both guys yep. there. Just a magnificent stop by Russell. The wherewithal to go down to the ground to stop his momentum, pop up and sling that ball over to Castro, and a heck of a stretch by Castro to get the out. Waiting to see if Robin Ventura wants to challenge us. Not a neighborhood play situation. If Robin feels like the throw pulled him off the base, he will challenge. He has decided not to. That's pretty. Starlin did keep his toe on the top of second base. He might have gotten spiked in the process by Saladino. So here's Cabrera batting right handed against the Southpaw Richard in there for a strike. One and one. Richard is 31, 6'5, 245. White Sox, Padres, Cubs starting in 08. Baltimore chop off the plate. No chance. Infield hit for Cabrera. Right, had two roll through the infield in this inning, and now this one off home plate. The misfortune for Hendricks and now Richard as well. You ever heard that? Called the Alabaster Blaster. I have not. It's an old term, like the Baltimore chop. Ball chopped off home plate. Mm -hmm. Alabaster, Alaska. No, when I was pitching, we had all kinds of names for a ball like that. None of them can be repeated. Garcia with two on. Or Alabaster blast, I guess. The correct term. A 
another one. This one, however, will kick foul. And Clayton has the ability to really simplify things because uh, he's really good at keeping that ball down around the knees and you know, coming out of the bullpen, facing a handful of hitters with good sink. And he's got good life on that sinker, too. He's throwing hard, 93. He shot as high as 95 the other night. Been through a lot. The alabaster blast is a Bob Prince ism. Forbes Field it would be the Baltimore chop that apparently would bounce even higher at that old ballpark because of the hard infield. Bob didn't want to call it a Baltimore chop because he it wasn't it in like Baltimore. It would be, it would be, you know, Plagiaristic, so he created his own. It was a kind of a dead ball era play. You see a lot of lead off. You used to see more of it. The slap hitters, the lead off guys, just hit the ball straight down and run. Willie Keeler. Apparently once hit a double on a Baltimore <laughs> chop. Well, yeah, if you bounce it high over the third baseman's head. See that every now and again. And you don't see as much artificial turf now, too. That's also part of it. One, two, Garcia swings and misses, and the inning finally comes to an end. But Adam Eaton with an opposite field homer, and the White Sox now lead again, five to four. Level. We'll watch the game with a former Cub player and listen to classic stories about life as a Cub. The luxury food and beverage package and a unique gift for each guest. The Legend Suite is the most exclusive way to watch a Cubs game. For more information, visit cubs.com slash suites. So some more work to do. And now Jeff Samarja here in the fifth inning as his second lead. Sayel Garcia continues to play a very shallow right field for Dexter Fowler. Especially on the pull side, it's one thing to shorten up on the on the off opposite side where a guy's more likely to just dump one in front of you. He's doing that for the other left-handed hitters. Just Fowler.
deep and playing a step or two towards left field. That gives Fowler a lot of room in right center field, and it's not going to give Garcia much of an angle to cut a ball off if Fowler is able to hit one out in that direction. Use an alabaster blast right here. Two and two. Swing and a miss. He got him the first time today. You mentioned it earlier. So Marge's. Strikeout rate down this year, and that's number three for him. In this one, yeah, it's it's kind of weird because his ground ball rate is way down as well. So he figured well, if he's not getting as many swings and misses, maybe he's changed his approach trying to get earlier contact. But if that were the case, you would expect to see a higher ground ball rate. That has not been the case. Yeah, his uh, strikeout percentage is uh, 17 and a half. Major League average 19 or 20, so it's not horribly off league average. But Pretty much his entire career, yeah. he's been 22, yeah. 23. Yeah. Well, early in his career, his walk rate was not good. He has improved that considerably. Two balls and a strike. Getting started, and that's tough when you're dealing with 97. DH mm -hmm. can be a tough assignment for a young player, it can be a tough assignment for any player who's used to playing the field all the time. Veteran guys have been around a long time when they're first asked to DA, so it just feels weird around the flow of the game. I fly to right. Garcia one hands it. Coughlin will step in a three run homer his last time up. Every homer he hits, a new career high. He's got 12. First time he's gotten the double digits in his career. Hit nine last year, hit nine when he won the rookie of the year in 09 with Florida. He drives this ball out of the deep center. Eaton back to the wall. It's the Chris Coughlin show today. Number two for him. <laughs> two bombs, four driven in. Marja talking to himself. Again, another beautiful swing by Coughlin. Your forward home run replay. I think he wants to continue hitting third. As Samarja just mumbling to himself. He's not supposed to take me deep straight away center field. He's playing small today. And Cogman would say, no way, man, I got that one. I barreled it up. So 
Soto just trying to calm the big guy down a little bit. That is the fifth career two homer game for Chris Coughlin. Swing and a miss. Second this year, he hit two in San Diego on May 19th. One off Shields, the other off Kimbrel. Quick feet by Brandon Hyde down there first to get out of the way of that hot shot. The guard down there fielding that thing is just having a heck of a time. So of Coglin's 43 career home runs, that's only the fifth hit to straightaway center, according to baseball reference. Rizzo, a towering blast to right. The Cubs go back to back and lead six to five. He crushed it. Wow. How impressive was that in the fifth inning yesterday? The Cubs hit three home runs. Two here in the fifth today. Launched. Gets down in front of Cabrera. Three straight two out hits. Crowd is buzzing here. A lot of Cup fans in the ballpark. Now Donnie Cooper, pitching coach, out to have a chat with Samarja. Cabrera was caught off guard. He wasn't ready to play on that. I don't think he was going to be able to make a play on that ball. But kind of awkward approaching that as well. Sloppy outfield play by the White Sox here today. Eight Cub home runs the last two days combined. The uh, Cubs faced Jeff back in spring training. He referenced, referenced it earlier his feast or famine comments after the game. They put a pretty good hurting on him then. But obviously didn't matter. This clearly does. Is caught by Sanchez. The air show has moved to the south side. The Cubs have connected three times today and lead again for the third time at six to five.
is not cool. It's hot. White Sox scoring runs here as of late as well. So six to five in the fifth. LaRoche fouls. Taking big swings. Cubs are hotter than the hood of your car. Swing and a miss. They're hotter than a depot stove. <laughs> now you've used that one before. That's an old Miloism. Yeah, yeah I, I had not heard it. One and two. He got him on the outside corner. Fastball at ninety three. Hey, what the Cubs might have found something here in Clayton Richard. Really been impressed. Well, he had that kind of velocity. His ability just to continually keep the ball down. Think about that, that style of pitching right there, 93 at the knees with sink. That that plays against both left and right-handed hitters. Yeah, you can't put it on the board. You can only use that headline here, right? Mm -hmm. Clock, uh, next door. I should put three on the board here today. Clark and Steve Stone working this series. A little side by side action. I, I, I like it. Uh, when this Crosstown series started, it would be only the, uh, the home broadcasters. Hate to not be able to broadcast these games. Yeah. This is fun stuff. Ramirez grounds out to Russell. Want to bring up Sanchez. Well, nice to have a guy on the mound like Richard today too, with his ground ball tendencies, the way the ball is jumping. Ground ball, unfortunately, Richard did not get a foot on it. As Castro just gets Sanchez. One, two, three, go the White Sox in the fifth. Been a wild one here in the series opener. Six, five for the Northsiders.
Cubs charities. Cubs Authentics is the premier outlet for all MLB authenticated Cubs memorabilia. Visit Cubs.com slash Authentics to bid on weekly auction items and to pre-order game used bases and baseballs. The Cubs will donate net proceeds from the sale of Cubs Authentics to Cubs charities. The Norfia swings and misses. Sixth inning, so Marja continues on, at least for now. Slider is in there, it's 0 2. Probably see a Soler back in the lineup tomorrow. The question will be Chris Coglin, even though you've got lefties, I would imagine. Be Denorfia and Soler on the corner spots in the outfield tomorrow night as he strikes out. The Quintana tomorrow. Arietta Quintana tomorrow. Heron and Sale on Sunday. Now definitely, you're going to sit your lefties against Sale. Quintana against left-handed hitters. Yeah, he's been awfully tough on lefties as well. 213 batting average. On the ground, long run by Ramirez. He's going to make a throw, but no chance. Castro's got a second hit. Looking out towards his bullpen, contemplating a move here. Marsh has worked awfully hard this afternoon in this heat. He's going to have to work a little harder now. Castro rolled one through the hole on the right side last time up. This time, Mir is able to glove it but not get him. Charged by Saladino. Short stop by trade has done a nice job at third and he gets Russell Castro at second two outs. Fowler for the fourth time triple double strikeout two runs. Don Cooper sprinting out of that dugout with a message to deliver. Left handed hitting Kyle Schwarber's on deck. Got the lefty working out in the pen. This is what I was talking about earlier. How a pitcher in the American League one, and then a guy with Samarja's reputation of being able to hang in there too, is gets exposed to these kinds of games where, because you are a battler and you've got good stuff, the manager, well, maybe he could just kind of push on through and keep going. And can lead to some ugly outings. Jeff uh, charged with nine earned runs in a start on June 2nd and back in Arlington against the Rangers. Five innings, 12 hits, nine runs. Twice this year he's allowed nine earned runs in a start. ERA currently sits at 479. Pitch. It is a strike. More times he's allowed seven earned. I think with a guy like Jeff, you almost have to, you know, cross out and look at his game by game and take out three, you know, three or four of the worst ones, and then you get a better picture of the kind of pitcher that he is. And that put the Lupinellis theory: make pitchers like three worst and three best starts, throw them out, and then the rest is kind of who you are. 
That sounds about right. Yeah. A real good month of May and then in July. It's been up and down. It's kind of mirrored this team. Two two foul tip strike three probably it for Samarja six five Cubs. Playoff push and the rest of the Chicago sports scene on the cap and Haw show presented by Horwitz Horwitz and Associates weekday mornings at nine right here on CSN. Big crowd here at U.S. Cellular Field late afternoon start lights are on kind of a cloudy day not a ton of sun. Giovanni Soto. Looks at ball one. RBI single is last time up. He has caught all but one of Jeff Samarja's starts. That one he didn't catch happened to be opening day at Kansas City. He's already in his 11th major league season. Goes by fast. Makes me feel old. I remember when he came up mm -hmm. as a oh, Cub. Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, about 2005, he had one plate appearance. Short stints in 06, 07, and then that great rookie of the year All Star campaign of 2008. 23 homers, 86 RBIs, 141 games. And the NL Central champs. Wait till your contemporaries' kids are in the league, then you really feel old. Do you remember who that guy was? Who that guy was? Yeah, for you. Just you. Oh, there's been a few, oh right? Gosh, Scott Vance like comes to mind. Tony Gwynn Jr. Mm -hmm. yeah, it won't be Tony long. Uh, we might see uh, Craig Biggio's kid in the big leagues. 
Gavin. An outstanding prospect playing at Notre Dame. Richard with a one two and it's too low. James Russell. Dad Jeff. Fossil. There's James, you guys were knocking out the crossword puzzle this morning when I got here to the ball. I was just the closer. Soto draws the walk. Normally down Richard airmailed that one a little bit. Double plays in order. Eaton, uh, you got to think maybe a little drag bun action. You have to respect that anyway. Where if you're Robin Ventura, you'd be tempted to play a little hit and run, but tough. You're not going to get a good jump with the lefty on the mound. Soto can't run. Since he can't run, he doesn't have good speed. He runs hard. He just doesn't yeah. run fast. Eaton does run fast, yeah. and he's showing some home run power. Well, there's the value of backspin right there. That was a great look at his swing, how he finished that swing and imparted backspin on the ball, and that's going to help it carry. He was looking. It pulled Soto for sure. Look at Joe. Joe was trying not to laugh. And Robin's going to ask for a box. Oh, he just handcuffed him. Remember that box that was called earlier in the year on Anthony when he started to come in to, yeah. to defend a bunt and then retreated to the base? And Ventura is going to try to press his case here that, that Anthony wasn't covering the base. But I doubt that he's going to. Make a whole lot of headway with Joe. To me, this is. See, Rizzo was going back to the bag in the last one that was called a ball. This one, he took his eyes off Richard for a second and then was clearly surprised by the throw. Joe's going to. Get the other umpires involved here. They will discuss. And, and, and perhaps uh, Robin's asking for something else. I don't know what it would be. Well, I think part of the, the deal there is Joe is behind Rizzo. I don't know. It looks like Kerwin Danley said something like, was he off the bag? Doesn't matter. Hmm. Did you think the last one was a ball? No. No, because I've seen that all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's a play we used to work on. The first baseman comes in a few steps and retreats back to the bag. As long as he's in the vicinity, I've never seen it called. Richard steps off. Has settled things down after Kyle Hendricks gave up five runs in just three and a third today. Our 
starting to miss up a little bit though. Probably got Joe Madden's attention. And ball elevated a little bit. Make a list when we see an umpire and supervisor. You often have little mm -hmm. questions about because to me that throw in this inning was more quote a block than the, the one they called the last time we saw this. I don't remember who it was against. I remember going through the rule book after that play and I couldn't it, find I couldn't find just, an explanation to justify yeah. a block call on either one of them. Swing and a miss, strike three. Eaton retired. For the first time. So Saunters on out. Weber sauces and seasonings call to the pen. And it's right hander Justin Grimm when we come back. Here's Justin Grimm. Well, Clayton Richard could pick up a win here today. We'll see how the Cubs bullpen post Richard is able to perform. He was really good. Grimm has been really good all year. He's on for the 41st time. He's got a 147 ERA. Awfully tough to hit. You see left handed hitters. Some 100 against him. Racing rookie. Tyler Saladino. We've got a runner at first, that's Soto. And the throw over. Ten consecutive scoreless appearances for Grimm. Popped him up. I think there's going to be a play. There will. And it's Rizzo in foul ground. Two outs. I think Anthony's dying for an opportunity to reenact that catch he made the other night. Wrigley and he left off the tarp on the top of the wall and into the stands.
That play there has become just far too routine for him. Foul strike on Abreu. Cubs farm system notes Tommy LaStella has joined the AAA Iowa Cubs. He went two for four with a three run homer last night. Matt Caesar has a 14 game hitting streak with the I Cubs. At Double A Tennessee, Albert Almora has a 10 game hitting streak during which he has 20 hits and a 513 batting average. Right hander Pierce Johnson. With the Smokies is six and one with a 170 and 12 starts this season. And Ian Happ with South Bend with a grand slam last night, knocked in five and a win at Beloit. Not the Cubs' first pick in the draft this year. And for those kids, our expectations are sky high with what this group of youngsters has done. A lot of pressure on those guys. And Albert Almora, he's going to spontaneously combust here the way he's going. It's good to see. Options are plenty here for uh, Grimm. And he and Montero trying to figure it out. Yacker. Balls, two strikes. Number two, and it works. Grimm gets out of the sixth inning, but still lead by a run, six to five. But there you go. Eight homers, 25 runs, 25 RBIs, 31 games. In game 32, Schwarber has added an RBI. Not too many guys over the last near century. Andy Brooks, Orlando Cepeda, Adam Dunn, Jeff Francoeur. And, and uh, obviously, uh, Cepeda, great career. Adam Dunn, great career. Uh, Jeff Francoeur, long career. Mandy Brooks was with the Cubs. Um, in just a couple of seasons, 25 and 26, put up very good numbers in 1925, and then spent the rest of his career in the minor leagues. I don't know the, the whole backstory there, but that one year, uh, when you look at the numbers, he slugged better than 500. Looked like a real good player. Uh, but we'll have to do some. We'll have to get some Saber people on that the Mandy Brooks project. Look, White Sox and Cubs fans. What did we tell you? Enjoying ice cream together. 
and having a laugh. So Zach Duke is on. Uh, Duke, uh, one of the additions that the White Sox made in the offseason to bolster a bullpen that really struggled last year. Their bullpen ERA this season, 3 5 2. Middle of the packish in the American League. It's ERA this year run higher than it was last year. The ERA can sometimes be a misleading statistic when you look at relievers, especially early in the year. You just never know from one season to the next what you're going to get with guys out of the bullpen. A lot depends on how they're used. His walks are way up this year. I know that much. And the strikeouts are down. Be a lot of different looks. Swings it up there, kind of a low three quarters arm angle. Fastball slider, cutter, curve, change. Called strike three. Got him on a breaking ball. More sidearm than low three quarters. Side started the leak on Schwarber and Duke found the strike zone. Hoglin tied it with a homer in the fifth. Rizzo then gave the Cubs their third lead as they went back to back. Chris has two today, tying his career high in a single game. This was a three run shot. Or go ahead, Homer, the first time game tire. The second one as he spins around on strike two. Well, maybe Clayton Richard can become the next Zach Duke. He strikes out Coglin. Former starter. I mean, I'm not talking styles, but just yeah, after yeah. that tender guy who uh, mm -hmm. used to be a starter. And become an effective reliever. Rizzo now is homered in back to back games. And over his last 15, he has seven home runs. This was a shot. So Marja knew it. Pretty stout right there, those numbers. It's interesting. Soto got a new ball uh, from a home plate umpire, Kerwin Danley, and he, he did make a, a, a good throw back to the mound, but there was a little hitch in his giddy up. We often discuss you can't have one without the other. If you have a hitch, you have to have a giddy up. At any rate, stretch time here on the south side. 6 5 Cubs.
Reserve your place in line for history in the making. Join the season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy. It's free to register. For details, visit Cubs.com slash waiting list. Hot day here. Ball's been jumping. People still having fun. Stay hydrated, folks. Good weekend. I huh? got Cubs, White Sox here all weekend. The air show's in town. Hot summer weather. It makes me want to eat a hot dog. Grim got Saladino and Abreu to end the sixth, and now faces Cabrera as we start the bottom of the seventh. 36 386, the paid crowd. Swing and a miss. A curveball will induce some ugly hacks, even from a good hitter like Cabrera. I don't know the numbers, but I do know they measure these things now. Spin rate, the guy's breaking ball. I imagine it's pretty high for a Grim. The ball to break that much that sharply. That's that's a tough skill. You that's one of those things you either have or you don't. The ability to spin the ball like that. Rizzo to Grim. Comes Garcia. They're just 24 years old. Fired from Detroit in a three team deal, July 30th, 2013. Well, we occasionally get these tweets, and you mentioned having a dog here at the ballpark. Mm -hmm. People ask us who has the best ballpark fair. We would not be the best people to ask. Because we don't walk around the stands. No, we don't get a chance to sample it very much. Right. Mm. Uh, we do usually get a Dodger dog when we're in LA. Well, okay. Probably not the best way to, to, to sample it though, because we usually get it in about the seventh inning and I'm hungry, so I could probably have you know a napkin and it would taste good yeah, with well, mustard we, on it. And you got a short period of time. So he just pounded down. Mott and Russell are up. One and two. Lula, 98 from Grimm. By the way, the best napkin and uh, mustard combo has got to be Colorado. Swing and a miss, strike three. I got some peanuts here. If you like no, I'm not. I'm not hungry. I just responding to the, the question. There he is, Uncle Charlie again. Tumbler. Uncle Charlie on uh, my three sons was a kind of a nice guy. Could be a little curmudgeonly at times, but uh, Justin Grimm's Uncle Charlie just flat nasty. You would not want to have an Uncle Charlie like Justin Grimm's Uncle Charlie. Bryant is basically playing second. Castro is on that side as well, but more up the middle. And now Russell with a strike on LaRose playing basically short. And cover the whole side of the field before. Ooh, 99. Chablula. Chippa. 
The Grim looks good in this old unit. He's got old style delivery right over the top and that power curveball. Old school pitcher, old school uni. Feeling it here today. Adam LaRoche pitched this year in a blowout. He was he was a very good high school pitcher. Dad pitched in the big leagues yeah. at one time for the Cubs. Dave LaRoche. The Grim Long. Reaper. Three strikeouts facing five hitters. Bullpen's been good today. To get to Wrigley Field, perhaps you'd like to take the train. You can do that on the red line. Cubs suggest you use public transportation. There's a bike check there, Clark and Addison. And if you drive your car, Cubs provide free parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games from 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Cubs leading six to five late. Always prudent to buy a little insurance, especially on the road. Duke faced three lefties in the seventh and got all of them. And now opposing Chris Bryant, who's two out of three with a double. Instead of that sweeping breaking ball, he was thrown to the lefties. So he'll try to turn the ball over and sink it a little bit to the right handed hitters. Kind of funky to see a single digit number on the mound. Yeah, I agree. Former Cub Zach Putnam. Grounded foul, third base side. Okay, got a, a, a finesse lefty on the mound, Chris Bryant batting, and Gary Jones <laughs> playing very deep, the third base coach. Find himself a little extra time to react. Swing and a miss, strike three. Luke has spanned three out of four. Here comes Montero, who is 0 for 3. And as promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo. Tweet your strongest fan photo to Data uh, Northside Data Strong fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Like somebody at the American Girl store. Oh. 82 and a strike. The Mets are 11 games over for the first time in five years. 
They are. Where are they? They're at home against the Pirates. Jay Happ, Bartolo Colon. About 20 minutes. We've got a four and a half game lead in the National League East. Montero grounds out. Amazing. When we saw them, we thought they were toast. Um, Lucas Duda's banged up. And it sounded like Terry Collins was very concerned that he might have to go on the disabled list. Giants beat the Nationals to start a, a big weekend set three to one last night. Nori Aoki has gone to the seven day concussion list. Remember, he got beamed in that Cub series by Jake Arietta on Sunday. Uh, sat out Tuesday, tried to play Wednesday, just did not feel right. So they're going to give him some time. Wrong with a big swing here. Pitch you want to do it on. Two and one. Scherzer and Kane later tonight. Nats and Giants. That evens the count at two and two. Nelson Cruz will go into. The Mariners game tonight at Fenway Park with a 21 game hitting streak. Couple of bounces to Ramirez. And the inning is over. It's late. We go to the last of the eighth inning. It's the Cubs six and the White Sox five. Up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more at MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Here's Pedro Strope, one run ball game, eighth inning. Richard and Grimm both outstanding here this afternoon. Now Strope gets his turn. He has allowed 
one hit over his last 10 appearances. Russell's got a charge. Late Ramirez with an infield single. First time he's been on today. Third time he's hit the ball to shortstop. This time not enough pace on it. And he was able to beat it. Quite a pretty good effort here by Addison Russell. Off balance, not able to get a whole lot on that throw. Infield knock for Ramirez. Chooses to play it here. He's got the switch hitting Sanchez already two for three with a double and a run and a stolen base. Bryant in at third. Soto on deck. Three sack bunts on the year for Sanchez. He squares, takes it for ball one. One run game, nothing new for the Cubs. We played a ton of them this season. 43 one run decisions, 26 up, 17 down. No strike. Robin may decide to let Sanchez swing here, see if he can exploit that hole on the right side of the infield. Looks like a possible hit and run. Ramirez with 15 steals this year. He's been caught four times. He takes off, and it is a hit and run. Is Sanchez fouls. Well, this is the situation where so many people say, "Man, you got to bunt. You got to bunt him over. Play for a run. You're down a run in your home ballpark." Well, the things that play here, and not the least of which is it's really hard to get a bunt down against a guy like Pedro Strope. Lately, it's been hard to get a hit off him. If you, you're going to give up an out for two shots of tying it. There's the bunt. Montero gets the out at first. A little hesitation. But he makes the play. So now they will have two shots. Not just a, a bunt, but a beautiful bunt by Sanchez. Perfectly done. Here we go. It's Soto against Strope and Montero with a good block. They're all good in this spot. He was upset with himself on a couple of Rondon wild pitches the other night. The redeemer, of course, was the, the home run in the 10th to win it. Pounced on that pitch. Yeah, and this boy, that's a, a, a big 90 feet with one out in the inning. Four on the slider. One and one. We got Castro sneaking in a little bit. Just to try to tighten up Ramirez a little bit at second base. Shorten up that secondary lead, make it a little tougher for him to try to get to third on a ball in the dirt.
a strike late call by Kerwin Danley and Soto doesn't like it at all. Castro really doing a good job keeping Ramirez near second base. Nice job by Montero yeah. framing that pitch. Expecting that slider out of way a little bit. You see catchers a lot of times have a jab at that backdoor slider. He held Joe West made the call at first. And it's full three and two. Eaton next. Anxious moment for a hitter. Time run and scoring position. Those guys want to swing here. Ball four. This Basio will head out to the mound before Eaton bats. Will pen is quiet. All the scoring done in the first five innings of this game. It looked like it was going to take double digits to win it. Bullpens have really calmed things down. Bonifacio is going to run for Soto. One former Cub for another. He was just activated off the DL. He had a left oblique strain on the DL in late July. Daryl Boston, the first base coach, and Anthony Rizzo. First and second. Ramirez at second. Bonifacio at first. So good speed on the bases. And same goes for the hitter, Adam Eaton. He's had a big day. Single walk, two run homer. Strike on Eaton. Ten home runs for Eaton this year. He had one all of last year and 40, 486 at bats. American League with 10 triples last year. He's got eight already this season. Stroke gets a sign for Montero setting up almost off the plate. And that's where the pitch is. That was a design 
ball trying to get Eaton to go out of the zone. to take the hitter out there lead him out off the plate well off the plate with the first one then come a little bit closer the next time hoping to get that chase swing and a miss he got him on a slider a huge second out for stroke. Great action on that slide ball is way out in front of it. Saladino, two out of four. A couple of singles, second and the fourth. Both off the starter, Hendricks. Good on base skills in the minor leagues for Saladino. Not a lot of power. Seventh round pick 2010 out of Oral Roberts University He's from San Diego, California. He waits on a 1 0 that will not happen at the moment. Stroke really trying to cut down that lead of Ramirez, the tying run at second base. Ramirez has to hold. Yeah, I mean, even though a double likely drives in the go ahead run, you don't play no doubles in this situation. You've got a one run lead, you're on the road, tying runs in scoring position. That's your focus to prevent that run from scoring. Hitters count 2 and 0. Oh. Takes a fastball 2 and 1. Slider here, but he go right after him with some heat. Now I always like stroke slider. I guess it just depends on their tendencies, what they know about Saladino. There go the runners, and it is a fastball, and he just got a piece. Karen wants to talk it over with him. A lot of times you get a guy in this situation. And he's thinking protect. And when you think protect, you're, you're thinking that you have to cover the outside part of the plate and be able to to fight off that slider. And so the thinking becomes, well, if we, if we got action and a good arm, we can get in in on his hands. And, and you know, Stroke certainly has that kind of stuff. 97 two seam fastball moving in on his hands. If, if he's looking to cover the outside part of the plate and he's Playing his hunches more towards the slider than the fastball, it'd be awfully difficult for him to do anything with that pitch. Now, if he crosses you up and decides to sit on a heater, he could burn you. <laughs> you know, he's telling Stroke, nope, you're not going to catch me. Three balls, two strikes. Runners go. The pitch. Swing and a miss. 
on the slider. Wow. Double fist pump by Strope as he gets out of the eighth. Cubs maintain their lead. First base, two out. That is a line single to left. Holy cow! Listen to the crowd. That was a 50 year old Minnie Minoso 1976 uh, appeared in three games with the White Sox and then two appearances when he was 54 in 1980 the Cuban Comet. The White Sox honoring him today along with Billy Pierce as well in these 1959 styled uniforms Cubs honoring Mr. Cub Ernie Banks. Former Cub Zach Putnam. See a lot of splitters from him. That was uh, one right there. Ball one on Castro. Lots of swings and misses, too. 53 punch outs and 38 innings for Putnam. Oh. How about the splitter cutter? Mix with Flowers now catching after Soto was removed for pinch runner. Yeah, that could be really effective against a lefty for a right handed pitcher. You know, that cutter in on the hands, force the guy to try to be quick to get to the cut fastball, counter that with a good splitter. Putnam throws his splitter 62% of the time. There are too many guys like that. And the cutter, then the, the sinker. Yeah, it's, it's a splitter essentially a changeup, and that, that's probably the most liberal use of a you know a splitter or changeup that I could think of. So basically, his fastball becomes his secondary pitch. Comes his change up. Yeah, change of pace. He dials it up a little bit with the heater. Base hit in the left. Castro is now three out of four. Oh, 
Taking advantage of his first start in a week. Rondon getting ready in the Cubs bullpen. Certainly, this stage of the ball game, you're in one run strategy. Joe thinks that Russell's capable of getting a butt down. Not a bad play at all. A lot of it will just depend on his matchups. What he sees, he looks at his magic card there. Sanchez has it. One out. It'll bring up Fowler. Well, Dexter's day got off to a great start. Triple double first two trips. Last time a couple of punch outs. Last two times. Up from the University of Michigan product. That ball is. Sprayed foul to left. Fifth round pick of the Indians in 08. Debuted with them in 2011. Two appearances with the Rockies 2012. Five games as a Cub 2013. In the last two years with the White Sox. Makes him tough on left-handed hitters. Uh, and obviously, lefties to follow here. Schwarber, Coglin up after Fowler. Jennings, lefty, is up in the bullpen. I suspect this will be it for Putnam. In some ways, Putnam's closer to a knuckleballer than he is you know, a regular fastball pitcher. Mm -hmm. Cabrera Garcia for the White Sox in the bottom of the night. Looks like it will be Hector Rondon to face them. Swing and a miss. He got him. A strange line for Fowler today, right? The triple double and then three consecutive strikeouts. He had a good day and a bad day all on the same day. We had two days. We had two days today. At the end of the day, it's a good day. Two out of five with a couple extra base hits. Absolutely. Like the knuckleball with that split finger pitch, you want to take that same philosophy. See it high, let it fly. See it low, let it go. He's starting at mid thigh or down around the knees. It's likely to 
dip out of the zone. If he makes a mistake, leaves it up, becomes very hittable. I think the other thing for hitters is just the fact, okay, he threw me a split. They threw me another one. And then another one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just not natural to think he's just going to continue to throw that pitch one after the next. And it's tough to pick up. They don't like. They don't see the the action on that pitch. He throws it hard. And he's somewhat unique. And there's, there's not that many guys throwing the splitter anymore. There used to be a ton of guys through the split finger pitch. Three in a row to start this at bat. I, at this point, would be surprised if he throws Schwarber a fastball. If he does, I don't think he'll throw it anywhere, or at least try to throw it anywhere near the strike zone. Yeah, it just it, yeah, if, if you feel like you've, you've slowed him up enough by throwing all those splitters where you could jam him with the heater, that's that's that would be the one consideration. But then you get into the whole thing about at this stage of the game trying to pitch away from slugging. And if you make a mistake out over the plate with a fastball, there's a chance Schwarber hits it into the seats. Well, and the other thing is, you know, pitchers when they need to command to pitch the best, they usually pick a fastball, but that's the pitch he throws the least. Fastball runs, that ball hit hard, knocked down, throw to first, and they get him Alexei Ramirez. Found a way to get in front of that ball. He may be hurt. Wow, what a play. Absolutely scalded by Schwarber. 6 5 as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Both on CSN and then back home to play Detroit, Atlanta, and Cleveland before we uh, head to California to play the Giants and the Dodgers. Astros moving, and that puts Ramirez in motion. So it kind of draws him to the play, but still a spectacular play by Alex Ramirez. He made a couple of them here today. That one stung. Yeah, a little shin burger. Yeah. Well, hopefully, it's Hector Rondon and not Hector Houdini today. <laughs> He's had a couple of eventful ones here these uh, last few days. So you're looking for drama free. We already have drama because it's a one run game and a Bray who's up. Right into it here goes Ron Doan. Swing and a miss. So against the Giants on Sunday, loaded the bases, nobody out, struck out three to end it. Against Milwaukee on Wednesday, 
Long ball, backhanded Rizzo. Ooh, a high underhand flip, but Rondon there, one out. He gave up an unearned run. The tying run scored on a wild pitch, so it was a blown save, his fourth of the year. But he struck out three. So the stuff was still nasty. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think somebody got, uh, Braun got a base hit on a pitch of way in off the plate. It wasn't like he was making bad pitches. And obviously, the slider in the dirt. But that's a swing and miss pitch for him, too. The bullpen's been a big part of it here today. Richard Grimm stroke scoreless baseball after three and a third for Kyle Hendricks this afternoon. One and oh on Cabrera. From the windup. One and one. It's been Slider City. He's thrown a lot more sliders here as of late than we saw earlier in the season. And here comes another one. Popped him up off of third. Bryant headed toward the tarp along with Russell. Great effort. Just could not make the play on the slide. Yeah, he went a long way for this one. Just off the end of his glove. Well, it's two and two. Garcia on deck. One out. Bottom nine, Cubs leading by a run. <laughs> it was a B or something? I don't know. Something was buzzing around Cabrera's head. Don't want to be distracted when a 98 mile an hour fastball is coming in your direction. Right. Russell. In the grass, looks it in. Out at first. Wow. What a play by Russell. That was a tricky little hop. And whereas he got help from Castro last time, this time it's Rizzo on the other end. What a play, what Ooh. a stretch. Yeah, that ball had some. Yeah, that's tricky all kinds spin. of funky spin. He didn't get a good grip on it. He had to get rid of it and just. Fired over there, hope for the best, and Rizzo with a heck of a play. These folks, uh, seen an entertaining ball game here this afternoon. Pitch to Avi Garcia, pops it up. Castro in the outfield grass, eight in a row. Cubs win six to five. Chris Coughlin with two home runs today, and the bullpen sparkling, as you mentioned. Yeah, and you know we talked in the open about this.